attention from before had gotten even worse for Lorelai. For the party. Lorelai just stood there, holding his stomach in pain. And the orc taunted him, practically calling him weak. Stone orc. Lorelai walked over and decided to let him go. But the orc wasn't having it. He wanted Lorelai to fight Kerr. He wanted Lorelai to prove that he is the warrior he said he was. But Lorelai doesn't want to. And this caused a huge stir. Kerr asked Lorelai if there was good reason as to why he was letting the orc go. And he tried to explain. But it was impossible. The orc kept yelling at Lorelai, taunting him, telling him to fight Kerr, to prove himself. And Jared was trying his best to defeat the situation because he was mad as well. And Lorelai just stood there trying to talk, but everybody was yelling at each other. And so was Carol. She was standing on the sidelines, completely out of it. She can't hear a single thing except an order. If he leaves, you're going to kill him. No, no, you can't kill him. Are you out of your mind? I'm doing this for safety. If he leaves, we are in danger. The yelling got worse. Do it. Do it. You leave him alone right now. The orc was yelling. The orc tried to leave. Kuro held up her staff and shot him. He was dead. unstable the party had gotten. I knew what had to be done. He approached Lorelai and left him his coat so he could be comforted. He walked over to Kara to check up on her. Clearly she wasn't okay, so he suggested it was best she stayed in the tent. He approached Kerr and told him that he was going to have a nice talk with him, along with Lorelai, to cool off. Jared takes Kerr to a corner in the woods to talk. And he talks about how he doesn't really agree with what he did to Lorelai. But he understands that he's mad at him. That he's mad at us. Kerr believes he reacted accordingly. Lorelai's been treating him as if he is beneath him. As if Lorelai is the pack leader. And Lorelai challenged him. So he reacted accordingly. Kerr feels hurt and betrayed by the party. And thinks that we are breaking his promises just for sick kicks. And Jared explained. We don't have control. We have a madness. Thanks to Neilbug, we are kind of fucked. And Kerr understands, but the pain is still there. And he doesn't like this pain. He doesn't like that his savior, his lover, and his brother hurt him this way. Kerr doesn't like that he can't embrace his culture. Because if he doesn't embrace his culture, he is dying on the inside. But if he does, people around him will die. And he doesn't know what to do. And his patron, Ignatu, thinks that he's straying away from the path and he is terrified for his life. Kerr doesn't want to die. And Jared reassures him that it's gonna be okay. That he can find a loophole. That he's not a problem and we all have our faults here. We all made mistakes. And that's okay. And after Kerr talked with Jared, he went over to Kara to finally talk, to understand what's going on. He gets down on one knee, takes off his mask, and he tells her that he forgives her for the pain. It's still gonna be there, but he forgives her. He tells her that he wants to understand, that he wants to be able to help her. And Carol finally tells him about her madness. Finally tells him about how her divisions are not her own. Everything she does is not by her own will. It's because of Nilbog. It's because of Orcus. Her body is not her own. Her mind is not her own. She has no agency. She's powerless. A puppet. But Kerr reassures her that she does have agency. She does have control. Because she is more than that. She is more than Orcus. She is more than Nilbog. Kerr holds her in an embrace and then talks to Orcus personally. If you take her away from me, 
I will rain hellfire upon all your enclaves. What we did to the southern enclave is just the beginning. I offer you my strength if you just don't take her away from me. Jiren walked over to Lorelai, seeing that he sort of relapsed, unfortunately. Took him to a corner in the woods to talk, and he let Lorelai speak. Lorelai explained to Jiren what he was trying to explain to the others. What happened with the orc, what the orc wanted him to do. Lorelai doesn't understand why he's so afraid. He doesn't understand why he feels this way around the people he considers his friends. He doesn't know what's going on, and it terrifies him because he feels like he is alone in this. The weight of the world is crushing his shoulders, and no one is there to help him because the party isn't talking to each other. And Jared just looks at him and says, It's not your fault. You're not the only one in on this. We're all in this together, Lorelai. It's not just you. Don't put that pressure on yourself. Lorelai just stands there, tears falling down his face, and he finally falls apart. But he's not crying out of desperation. He's crying from relief. After a bit, Lorelai then decides to check up on Jared, because no one's checked up on him this whole time. He asks if he's okay, how he feels, and Jared hasn't had time to process his emotions, or to even understand how he feels about everything, because so much has happened in so little time. Lorelai then gives Jared a gift, a drawing. He doesn't know when Jared's birthday is, but he wanted to give it to him just in case. Jared then tells him that his birthday is in six days, and Lorelai takes mental notes of that for later. Oh, so uh, I see you're doing better. That's good. It's great. I see you guys talked as well. Uh, I'm very happy to see that you guys are okay. Um, oh, wow, you guys are really, really, really nice together. You're good together here. Church. I'm really happy you're good. Uh, Shit, he's falling! I got him! I got him! Uh, there you go. Um, I'll see you guys in the morning? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sleep well. Uh, I. Uh, uh, fall. Oh, <laughs> I was right. to see that it's snowing outside. It's cold. And they see Kerr frantically building a fire because he's freezing. Knowles can't survive in the winter. He might freeze to death if we don't do anything. Kerr, oh, oh my shit. god, no, you're wait, freezing! Let me get, let me get my stuff, let me get my stuff here quick. No, 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 take no, no, take no, 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 you about something. Are you really from Varlindale? I mean, well, I wasn't always part of it, but it used to be my forever home, yeah, until I was eight. I mean, it wasn't nice, but it was a home. What? What was your life like?
You knew Andreas. Well, yeah, it's just said he was my only friend in Varlindale. Why? No particular reason. And a scarf. A hooded scarf. Well, now that you mention it. Yeah, he was. Why? I. I know who that is. Lorelei starts asking her, How? How do you know who that is? And Carol's explaining the similarities in her life and how she also knew Andreas. Andreas was her best friend as well. And he was supposed to be her best man at her wedding. But he disappeared. And that made Lorelai sad. He was happy to know that Andreas had a good life, even after, you know, Lorelai went missing. But, but then it was a little confusing. Andreas was talkative, but never mentioned Lorelai. And Lorelai was a little hurt, but he kind of accepted that because his time in Brownville wasn't that long. And the two of them keep talking until Lorelai says, when we get to Rollingdale, Caro, and we see the priest, promise me that you'll find me back. And the two of them catch up to Jared and Kurt, and they were playing rock, paper, scissors. The party has a nice time together. They were bonding. Lorelai then expresses his concerns for Jared as to why he passed out, and Jared doesn't seem to recall that, or more so, Jared doesn't want to talk about it. And Lorelai looks at Kerr, and Kerr understands. Kerr says that this is Jared's time to heal, that he's done everything for us, and it's now time that we do the same for him. Jared's healing is laughter, happiness, bonding. It is now Jared's turn. party went deep into the woods and found an abandoned barn with this halfway scarecrow in it that has ravens on it and Lauren scared off the ravens only to find out that the scarecrow is alive and she is the cutest thing ever and she says hi oh my gosh it's been a while and she just hops up down and she makes the party dance and she gives us little drinks she's a bard of motion and her name is Nene Silent Willow and she's the precious thing ever <gasps> <laughs> I wanted to take her with us, but we couldn't because she had to continue protecting the barn because it's her job. So I, Lorelai gave her a stone as a token of friendship, and she gave me pixie dust. And then Lorelai sneezed and began to fly 200 feet in the air for a minute. And then, once he came back down, we unfortunately had to say goodbye to Nini. <laughs> Nini! And we went deeper into the woods to camp and rest. It's moments like these that make everything worth it. All the laughter, all the joy, all the happiness. It's that that makes everything the party has been through absolutely worth it. The party then wakes up and makes their way down to the temple to find the camp of- We obliterated those motherfuckers. They stood no chance. The party then made their way towards the temple to find a pile of goblinoid corpses. Four bugbears still standing and flying above them were two spectators while two goblin mages were holding a gate open. <gasps> what the fuck is that? The fight was kind of tough. We killed the bugbears. Well, spectators also killed them. And the spectators were now trying to kill us. It was pretty scary, but we managed. Lorelai found an opening and rushed inside the gate. Jared eventually followed through, but Cameron and Kerr were still outside, surrounded by spectators and a group of goblin archers that popped in out of nowhere. Carol got hit bad, and Kerr saw this. 
he picked her up and tried running for it, but then he told her to fly in, to go, and he'll catch up. Carol was hesitant, but she had to listen, so she flew inside. Kirk ran towards the gate. He tried his best. But Kerr didn't make it. The party is now in a dungeon without Kerr. Last time they were separated from Kerr, it obviously did not go well. But this is different. Carol sent out Eppa to check out one of the rooms. And Eppa relayed an image to Carol. The room Eppa was in was covered in corpses. And there was a chest and a lot of spider webs. Eppa got tangled up in one of the spider webs where a giant fucking spider comes in, poisons Eppa, wraps him up, and takes him away for dinner! This, of course, makes Carol sad, but Eppa will be okay. Carol can always summon Eppa in like an hour or so, but now the party have to travel on their own, so they were gonna try and explore the other room. Let's turn around, let's turn around, let's turn around. The party then enters the room Eppa was in and sees the corpses, the chest, and the big giant fucking spider in the corner, waiting patiently, almost as if it can't really see us. The chest, however... Don't touch it. Don't touch it. We're not touching it. We're not touching it. We're not touching that. The party continues on, walking up some stairs to find more corpses, some of them still alive, thrashing and screaming inside spiderweb. And there was a room next to them, filled with treasure. It didn't look cursed. It didn't look like there were mimics in there. Lorelei, wanting to be safe, no, no, peeked in do with his quarterstaff, no, no, touching it, but then it got caught up in spider web. But he managed to pull it out safely. Giant spider! Giant spider! 